Place the InfraScanner in the cradle to charge the unit. Insert the InfraScanner vertically and then lean it backward, making sure to engage the spring-loaded cradle pins. To remove the InfraScanner from the cradle, simply tilt the unit forward and lift. To determine if the InfraScanner is charging properly, simply take notice of the cradle. When the green light is on, it means the charging cradle is plugged in and powered on. When the InfraScanner is in the cradle and the amber light is on, the unit is charging. When the amber light goes out, the unit is fully charged. When the red fault light is on, there is a problem with charging. Try removing the unit and unplugging the cradle. Plug the cradle back in and place the unit back in the cradle. If the red fault light persists, please contact InfraScan customer support. When running on the rechargeable battery pack, the InfraScanner will operate for 90 minutes, taking approximately 15 scans. It takes approximately 6 hours to fully recharge the battery. If AA batteries are used, the InfraScanner will run for 120 minutes, taking approximately 20 scans. Make sure the system is charged. If you are getting multiple error codes, put in a fresh set of AA batteries or recharge the unit. Install a disposable fiber optic shield and wait approximately 15 seconds for InfraScanner to power on. Press the center round green button to select Measure. Take note of the scan number for the patient's chart and then press the center round green button again to select Next. The head diagram appears and you are now ready to scan. Starting at the left frontal location, press either of the two measurement buttons and immediately release. Be careful to maintain direct and constant contact between both probes and the patient's head after releasing the measurement button. You will hear a beep and the screen will go dark. When you hear a second beep or see the screen flash back on, the scan is complete. If you are in an area where you cannot hear the beep or see the screen flash, such as the scene of a trauma or in bright sunlight, simply count to 10 for the first measurement and count to 6 for the second measurement. A double beep at the end of the scan indicates an error. If you hear this, check the screen and follow the error code. Press the center round green button to clear the error message and rescan. You will repeat the same procedure to collect a total of eight scans from the eight designated measurement locations discussed in the measurement points section. It is important to clean the InfraScanner with an antimicrobial wipe after each use. To ensure the unit is completely clean, follow this simple procedure. Remove the disposable shield. Each disposable shield is approved for single patient use. A new shield must be used for each patient. However, you may clean each patient's individual shield with an alcohol swab after each use, and you can use the shield up to 10 times. Make sure to pay special attention to the tips of the optical fibers while cleaning. Store the disposable shield in the patient's area or room. Next, clean the InfraScanner by wiping it down completely with an antimicrobial wipe, remembering to clean the screen and the measurement buttons on the back of the unit. Place the InfraScanner back in the cradle after each use. Remove and dispose of your gloves after each use. There are four measurements that must be recorded on both sides of the patient's head for a total of eight measurement results. You always begin on the left side of the head for each measurement, unless the InfraScanner tells you to reverse the order. The two frontal measurements are taken just under the hairline, with the probe closest to the patient's nose lining up directly above the appropriate pupil. For high foreheads or receding hairlines, scan approximately 4 centimeters or 1 and a half inches above the eyebrow. The two temporal measurements are taken in temporal fossa, keeping the unit centered over the top of the ear. The two parietal measurements are taken directly above the ears, midway between the ear and midline of the skull. The two occipital measurements are taken on the back of the head, midway between the top of the ear and occipital protuberance, 2 to 3 centimeters or 1 inch above the top of the ear.